live. We're live? It's yeah. unbelievable. I didn't even believe that. I don't believe you. Now, hi, I'm James Haskell, and you're watching O2 Inside Line live. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> they wanted a slightly more well-known and expensive presenter, so they've sacked Vern off and got me in for the day uh, to kind of raise ratings, but we'll see how it goes. I'm joined by Ben Earl and Ollie Thorley. Yes! <laughs> they don't get out a lot, these lads, so um, they're looking a little bit nervous, but don't panic, nobody will bite. Ollie, obviously we want to move on to, to Scotland, but it would be remiss of me not to discuss the France game. Uh, things didn't quite go according to plan, but one man who stood up head and shoulders above the rest was, was Johnny May. We've got a little VT here. Do you want to talk the viewers through his tries? Uh, I mean, it was just really good to address the opportunity. Like, a nice two on one on the edge, and then that's just, you know... Deadly finishing, it's brilliant, isn't it? Is there anyone quicker than Johnny May? Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's up for debate, isn't it? He's, he's one of the quickest, um, but you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of speedy, uh, speedy rugby players out there. Um, I mean, this, this is an incredible finish. I don't think yeah, many no, people good. in world rugby can do that. Some people say that you're a bit of a, a, a 2.0 Johnny <laughs> May. Lean, professional, slightly out there. Is that, is that true? Or? Um, I, I mean, I, I think there are probably comparisons. Yeah, we obviously both came through the Gloucester Academy. Um, both speed's a big part of our game, so... Uh, Who is faster, you or Johnny? Uh, I, I don't actually, uh, I really don't know. Oh dear! Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be that well, guy that just, oh, just, just stands I sense a fence. challenge coming on, actually. Um, we were going to do some weird but, game um, earlier, but I think we yeah. should race. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I mean, yeah, we are, we are sort of uh, similar in certain respects, different in others, so... Right, okay. Yeah, well, ho hopefully I'll get to we emulate what he does on the pitch at some point. Well, I hope you do too, but uh, <laughs> we will be having a live race, maybe some sort of fight to the death. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ben. Now look, uh, I only were involved in, in, in the weekend, um, but you know, when you have a loss, how, how quickly do you get over it or how long do you dwell on it? I think the nature of the Six Nations tournament allows it not really to dwell on it that much. I think um, the focus will probably shift um, quite quickly onto Scotland with the short turnaround being the game being on Saturday. Um, look, I think we'll learn from elements of that game against France, especially the first half, I think, and, and what we did well in the second half. Um, but yeah, like I said, I don't think we'll dwell a huge amount on it. Probably more um, touching it maybe later in the week and how we can prepare best we can for Scotland. You were actually out there, um, sort of, you know, warming up with the lads, sort of bin juice for the for the for the weekend. <laughs> did you? Was there a great atmosphere? Did the boys look ready? You know, what sort of went on? I mean, I, mean, I, I think if you ask anyone in camp, they'd say that preparation was good. We we trained well over in Portugal and stuff, and. Um, uh, and you know, put ourselves in the right in the right sort of place to play. But um, the atmosphere was was pretty amazing at the Stade de France. Obviously, like there was there'd been a lot of um, hype built up in France about the game. They they'd sort of sold the stadium out two months in advance. So um, so I don't know whether that was a factor. But um, but no, th no, the, the boys prepare well. So um, we'll just have a, a look at a sort of well, we already have had a bit of a look, and we'll continue to over the next couple of days about what maybe went slightly wrong and then looked to take that into Scotland. Obviously, um, France looked like kind of a different side than we've seen before. Did you expect them to play as well as they did? Um, I'm not sure as well as they did, but there were certain aspects of their game that people were expecting. Um, obviously, Sean Edwards, new defence coach, there were certainly some strong, um, some strong straights that we'd seen in the Welsh team the year before. Um, look, you know they're a quality opposition. Look at that back line, back of tower, um, enter Mac, like you've got some really classy operators. So um, look, we probably saw the best of them and, and they'll probably be contenders for, for, the, for the tournament, as will we hope to be. So, you know, like I said, switch on to Scotland and, and try and get a win under our belt. How good looking is enter Mac? Unbelievable, when he's kicking <laughs> and he looked beautiful. I tried to get a rise out of my wife. I was like, he's really good looking, isn't he? She went, not my type. I was like, I'm watching you, love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching you. Um, obviously, one of the big parts of the O2 Inside Line Live is the fan questions. Uh, we've had lots coming in. Um, are you lads ready? Yeah. Th go steady. You look very nervous. It's not mastermind here. This um, is a really, yeah. really cerebral, very rugby-focused question. Are you ready? James Southall wants to know, who is your favourite boy band? My favourite boy band? Um, uh, that's a good question. I, I, I know I, it's 2020. Favourite girl band, if you like. That, that, that is very true. Uh, yeah. um, I, I always liked uh, Westlife when I was growing up. Right. That was good. And, and also, I, I don't know if you could call them a, a boy band, but Earth, Wind & Fire. 
What? I mean, they're not really, they're not really a boy band. I yeah. don't know. Is that? No, I like it. <laughs> Listen, there is, <laughs> yeah, there is band, absolutely no judgment here. I, I like where you've come from. I was yeah, a little I'm bit nervous working with you, but you are pulling some gems. Uh. <laughs> what about yourself, Ben? What about yourself? Oh, I'm going to go classic. One Direction was was a, was a favourite of mine, right. especially you know. Because you were probably born in 2001, weren't you, or something like that? 98. So 98. you know, it was not far off. But yeah, like you know. The classic year nine parties, One Direction comes on, everyone gets buzzing. That's yeah, I mean, if you're asking me, Backstreet Boys, Thank great you. sing along, great, you know, great moments. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know, if you, this is young viewers and you don't know Backstreet Boys, you should be, just, you know, very much ashamed, but have a look at them, they are fantastic. Um, Jackie Lewis, again, a more cerebral character, wants to know <laughs> reading any good books at the moment? Uh, I'm currently reading uh, uh, Syed's Rebel Ideas, so. Matthew Syed, so yeah, which, which has been really, really interesting. He wrote, did he write Black Box Thinking? Or? Yeah, yeah, he did, he yeah. Did. Um, so Knowledge. there you go, look at that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, have you learned to read yet? Or <laughs> <are you laughs> yeah. um, well, I haven't, I'm not actually reading anything at the moment. I'm kind of um, the sight of a book. Probably still trying to get through a judgment about Saracen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah good, good, very good. Yeah, yeah, no, no, not reading not, anything not really at the moment. moment. No. Okay, Fraser Williams wants to know, what's the most you've ever eaten in one day, Ben? Oh, I feel like a, a Sunday at home with your mum. She does you a full English to start and then, you know, some cold cuts during the midday and then a big old roast, a good spread in the evening. An invite round your gaff. Yeah, it's exactly. Cold cuts between <laughs> breakfast. Come to the Earls. Unbelievable. Amazing. I will do, actually. I'll get round there. Um, <laughs> what about yourself? I think, I think probably, I probably, I eat almost more on camp than I do anywhere else. It's just brilliant. Like, the food we get is amazing. We've got a chef, Carl, who just puts on a feast every single meal, so you, you've got to be careful. Because uh, what I was led to believe, your, your body fats are incredible, aren't they? Sort of Johnny May S, sort of 5%, that kind of thing, uh, to I, Rigmeister I, General? I, I, I mean, I've got a decent rig, but, um, but I don't know. I didn't know, ask what it looked like, I made body fats, but I don't, I don't know, yourself, yeah, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know what my actual body fats would be. Uh, but you probably do, yeah, though, don't you? Yeah, Pretending you don't, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't, uh, the viewers is, want to know the details. This is what O2 yeah. Inside Line Live is about. <laughs> Uh, skin folds? Yeah, probably. Yes. Oh, my, so skin folds are probably yeah. be sub fifty. So yeah, it's probably right. me somewhere in the sort of seven eight percent. So I thought. Okay. But that's just a nailed excellent. It. That's nailed just it. a random guess, isn't it? So. Yeah. Well, random guess, but from the chart you've got <laughs> your wall at home <laughs> that you look at <laughs> every BMI. single BMI. every single night. Okay. Now again, um, very rugby focused question. Uh, Emily Little, would you ever give MMA a try like James? Because I'm hard now, by the way. <laughs> not, not in a weird way, like I'm fighting <laughs> strong. No, I don't think I would. I think once, um, once my contact sport days are over and I retire, I think I'll um, stay well clear of that. Yeah, probably a good idea. Yeah. It's horrific. <laughs> it is very hard. Uh, what about yourself? Uh, I, I think there's like a certain decorum in rugby, isn't there? Yes. Whereas MMA doesn't really have that. So I, I, I think I'm going to stick to the, the sport that's kind of controlled madness rather than just madness. Yes, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. I would recommend the most people to stay <laughs> well away from it. Yeah. Um, Will Knight, what's it like being in England camp? I mean, for you, Ben, obviously a big oh, day. Yeah. Many hero. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's surreal every time you, you get to be involved in camps like this, um, especially in a, in a campaign such as this one, a long, um, intense one like this you're honoured but you've also got a role to play um, preparing the lads or it, if you're lucky enough to play so um, it's an honour that you, you have to pinch yourself every once in a while but you know that there's a job to do as well you can't just come along for the ride. Just on that point obviously uh, as we're looking into it towards the, the, the Scotland game the guys aren't involved potentially I know selection's still up in the air but if you weren't involved how as important is it for you guys to raise the bar to make sure you challenge the guys who are potentially starting? Hugely important. I mean, Owen set the stall out very early in last week um, when we were in Portugal saying, you know, we know where we are in terms of the World Cup final, etc. but we've, we've got to raise the standards and, and that comes from first and foremost training. Um, look, everyone's got a role to play, whether that's playing, preparing um, the lads to play, um, yeah, doing extras with the boys or, and or being involved in the main session. So, yeah, everyone's got a role to play. It's hugely important. Ollie, Victoria Mowbray wants to know what football team do you support? I'm a West Ham fan. My, yes. well, my, dad, yes. my dad supports West Ham. Actually. I'm now an <laughs> Arsenal supporter because I got to spend time with Ian Wright and, and Roman Kemp. I don't really support a football team, but I went yeah. there once and they, they beat Man United 2-0. <laughs> and I was in the hospitality box and I retired from football. So I went <laughs> in and that's it, that's it. What about you? Arsenal as well. So, mm -hmm. Friends. Back row friends. Um, Bethany Lewis, Ollie, what inspired you to get into rugby? 
Uh, I, I think it was actually a, uh, a friend of mine played at the local local club and just invited me along, and it was it was around the time of the 2003 World Cup, so obviously rugby was like like in, in everyone's minds at the time. So um, uh, so I think a combination of those two factors, sort of like you know just going along with my mates and uh, and the World Cup. Lovely. If you're asking me, it was because I was terrible at everything else. <laughs> That's all I could do, and even then I wasn't that good at that. But anyway, um, Nathan Darrell, what are you, well, this is a question from Nathan Darrell. What are your first uh, Guinness Six Nations memories? Um, one of my favourite memories, actually, was, um, and I don't actually remember what year it was, but it was when Aaron, Aaron Ordecke used to wear that big nose uh, mask thing. That always, and that was it looks like, like George Cruz is wearing a big <laughs> nose thing most of the day, but that's actually his nose. Um, yeah, that was like my first big memory. Games wise, I didn't get into rugby till quite late. There was, I mean, I've seen videos of and remember watching Manu um, storm into the heart try from the halfway line against um, Ireland. It, yeah, yeah, it Ireland, and then he did the same against France, if not the same year, a couple of years later. Like those big memories of Manu bursting onto the scene were big for me. Nothing, no memories of me. No, no. <laughs> no. No, only featured 77 times. Who's counting? A bit like Ollie and his body fats. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, thank you very much for your questions. That's all we have time for this week in that respect. Pete, keep sending them in. But we do have a fantastic game. Uh, it's called Pindaloo. Uh, I'm not allowed to do it. My agent says I can't embarrass myself any further on uh, live TV. But we're going to have 30 seconds, right, to get as many rotations as you can. Uh, our lovely assistant over there has got a hooter. So when that goes, it's a skill about... Uh, well, it's a game of skill and deft touch. So you have to swing it and try and catch swing it. Swing it and catch it. And ideally, apparently on YouTube, oh, there's see. absolute keynotes who can make it go round and round and round. I, I was struggling to, 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 get, to get it in. Yeah. There might be, yeah. There might be two balls in there, by the way. There sometimes there are, right. sometimes there aren't. Okay. Do you, have a, you had a bit of practice before? I have not. Well, you, you probably don't want to do two balls in at once. Do you want, to, do you want one ball at once? Yeah, one ball's perfect. Yeah, do you want to tip the one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, is it okay? Yeah. Fine. Well, I'll, I'll be well, right. Don't worry, the team's in safe hands this week. <laughs> <laughs> Very safe. Okay. You got him? You got him, ben? Tell me when I need 30 to go. Seconds 30 on seconds on the hooter. Three, two, one. Nice. Oh, no. Come in. Ridiculous game. <laughs> Terrible, isn't it? One of the worst games ever invented. Two. Oh, no. Sorry. It's horrible. Oh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, that's how you do it, right? Does that count? <laughs> right. Oh! <laughs> Five. Uh, oh. Yeah. oh my god, I've lost the clock. Mm. <laughs> if you're still watching this, this is O2 Inside Line. Uh, oh, whoa. Jesus. Wow. How many was that? Seven. Oh, that. Seven. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's some absolute oh, quality that viewing there. Awful. Sorry, guys. So I'll just have a quick warm up as well. Yeah. I bet he's going to be like Rain Man and get it round yeah. a million times. Oh, there he is. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, right, okay. Here we go. I bet you play this in the bedroom with Johnny May, don't you? I've hardly done this before. Okay, you ready? 30 seconds starts now. Go. Yeah. Oh. 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 I mean, oh. I mean what? it's on the move. I'm not really Producers. sure how exciting this is. <laughs> if you tune over to our other channels, we've got paint dry. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Five. Yeah, again. <laughs> Scotland must absolutely be quaking it with this level of skill <laughs> on display. You can tell why these two are absolute bin juice. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Oh, Classic. Oh, yeah. oh, right, well. Six. Win for me. Uh, if you're still logged in and watching O2 Inside Line live and you haven't fallen asleep, uh, that was a terrible game. Well, no, <laughs> it was a good game. Oh. My producer says it's a good game, and if they tell you around here that it's good, you have to go along with it. <laughs> Otherwise, Vernon will be back. Um, <laughs> That's not can laughter, I'm actually making people laugh. Um, so I've got a few Scotland questions, obviously because, uh, j all jokes aside, we're looking forward to this weekend. Now, you know, we've had a bit of a mixed bag against Scotland the last couple of years, obviously went up there, got caught out, some of the best kind of breakdown work we, we, we've seen from a, a, a side, and then last year they came to Twickenham, and obviously we got the, uh, the, the draw. Um, you know, what does a test week look like after a game like France looking to Scotland? Um, so obviously the boys who played, uh, Yesterday it was, flew back this morning. Um, today's just a day of uh, a few meetings this evening and, and a chance for, the, for those boys to recover. Um, and then tomorrow, a bit of a, bit of a lighter day. Um, 
a gym session in the morning with like an organisational session in the afternoon. It's never that light, is it? No, well, it's, they say 60%, but by the end you're, you're, <laughs> you're reaching new max speeds, so it's always <laughs> ideal. And then um, Wednesday is, is what's known as game training, so it's like the intense day um, with an upper body session tied in there. And then, yeah, then we fly to Scotland on Thursday. Okay, so obviously from that perspective, it's going to be intense, but it's going to be one of those things we're going to ramp up. And, yeah. you, and as we talked about earlier, you've kind of got to bury that France game, do the analysis. It's kind of uh, already, as you've said, you've done a bit of it, but then you've got to kick straight into to, to the Scotland game. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Well, that's the sort of tough and great thing about Six Nations, isn't it? In the, in the yeah, you have to recover quickly from what was quite a painful loss, um, but you get a chance to rectify it straight away. Obviously playing Scotland in Edinburgh, we talked a little bit about it a minute ago, how, how tough it was to go down there and how we got that loss. Is there any bigger fixture than playing Scotland in, in Edinburgh? I think, you know, that they, it's a big rivalry. They, it's, um, someone wrote earlier that, you know, every game against England is the team's biggest game. Um, I think, you know, they're a team that have to be respected and, and, and you know, it is a big game. You're playing for a cup at the end of the day. Um, and it's at one of the, one of the great grounds of, European and world rugby, so yeah, it's, it's a pretty big game. Have you been down there and had any opportunity to play? Uh, I've, I haven't actually played at Murrayfield before, um, but I've, I've been to the stadium uh, actually to watch the Scotland game uh, a couple of years ago, so I sort of have a, an idea of what the, the atmosphere is like. Uh, obviously, it's the oldest uh, international rugby match in the world, so there's a lot of history attached to it. So, um, uh, and, I, and I think after what was a, a good Scotland performance, but ultimately a loss. I think they're going to be really fired up. So, um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be a big big tough game. And, and like you said, the the you know last couple of games against Scotland, they've they've really you know t tested up, tested us in various areas. So we're going to have to be on top of our game. Well, lads, listen, thank you so much for uh, giving us your time, Ben Earl, Ollie Thorley. I'm James Haskell. You've been watching O2 Inside Line. If you want to see more of our uh, content then head over to the other England rugby channels uh, I might be back next week depending on how this went people could get upset could Vernon could be back let's wait and see thank you so much for tuning in